Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy. And today I'm covering part one of our incarnate map making tutorial all about land masses. As you're watching this video today, don't forget to smash that like button if you like what you see. Now, let's get into it. Alrighty folks, today we're going to be covering some incarnate mapping essentials, okay? Starting off today, we're doing land masses. That's certainly one of the first building blocks you have for incarnate. So head on over to incarnate.com, sign up, log in with your preferred method, whether that is Facebook, Google, or if you don't have either one of those or don't want to put them in, you can go ahead and put your name and email on things and go ahead and get signed up that way, of course. There is a little check mark to make sure that you are or are not over the age of 13, and then click on sign on in and you'll be good to go when you load up your maps it takes you to the default map location then of course hit create map now there are some other options as far as loading online backups if you're already working on a project you can hover over it it's gonna let you edit map and so forth uh, today we're gonna start as though we are just starting off in our incarnate journey now on here, we're gonna, it's going to give you different styles to choose from, all the way from fantasy battle maps. You can see uh, the little preview pane over on the right is going to give you kind of an idea of what it's going to look like. Watercolor Cities is going to give you much more of that sort of playful, lightly colored, uh, hand-drawn sort of look. Watercolor Battle Maps is going to be just the same, but for a smaller area, such as a building. Uh, perhaps you could build a town out of that. Fantasy Regional is going to get you for a larger area. Now, I will tell you that sometimes you can mix and match these icons and stamps and color patterns uh, to make the world look how you want it to look. I myself like to use stamps from the Regional HD. Some of the mountains are a little better looking to me, uh, you know, but it just fits your own preference. Scrolling down, we have Parchment World, which is going to give us that old world view sort of map, like you found a map in a garage or something. Uh, Fantasy World is going to give you a little bit more of a modern update, but again, it is designed for a world. So today we're just going to take a look at planning out a world map. Today we're just going to plan out making a traditional world map. I'm going to choose Fantasy World. Parchment World is certainly a good option. We're going to go with something a little more colorful though. And here we go. Once we've selected it, we're going to go ahead and hit choose style. Now from here, you have four different editing resolutions. It defaults to 2K, which is medium setting. From personal experience, if your computer is not a high-end machine, editing in Ultra 4K or even 3K, it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to make your saving a little harder. Just keep in mind that at any point in time, when you output these maps, when you export them to a image file, you can actually choose the 4K resolution, and it's going to upscale that for you. This is just going to keep it a little easier to do the editing process, okay? So, and it looks pretty good. So from there, we have four different aspect ratios, which are landscape, gives you more of a wide angle view, portrait, up and down, of course, square is, well, it's, it's square. Custom lets you choose the number of rows and columns you have. So you can certainly make something custom down the road, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and choose landscape. It's a pretty standard option, and then we'll hit create map. Once you have Incarnate loaded up, you're going to see a very basic screen. Number one, you're going to see a large land or water or something mass in front of you. Uh, every time you load up a new map, this is a water layer map, meaning that this is in the background. So, one of your first steps is to acclimate yourself to the screen. All of our different stamps, tools, and things are gonna be down here on the left-hand side. On the top of your screen is gonna be the different options inside of each one of those choices, which we're gonna to get to here momentarily. Now, I'm not gonna explain every hotkey because it's gonna be a little tricky jumping around the map uh, for newcomers, so you'll learn those as you go. You can see some of them at the bottom of the screen. Those are the hotkeys for whichever icon on the left that we have chosen. Now, the hotkeys I do suggest you learn right away. Mouse scroll button, the middle mouse button is going to scroll in and out. That's going to let you zoom. And almost more importantly, if you were to click the mouse, it's going to give you a stamp of some sort, right? It's going to let your cursor make something. However, if you hold down space, right, that cursor becomes a hand and it lets you pan around the map. Not so important when it's a big map like this, but once you get zoomed into some finer detail, it lets you scoop through it, okay? Far and wide, those are the two shortcuts you should learn right off the bat anyway so we're going to show you a couple different tools so the first tool we use is the mask tool okay this is the tool that actually provides your land or water mask and as i mentioned this defaults to being a background layer which is a water level first up we have the edge pattern okay now this edge pattern when you draw with your cursor is going to give you 
just that. It's gonna give you a nice little jagged edge and make it look a little more uh, familiar. Then up at the top, it's gonna to give you some other options, okay? We can choose all of our shapes up here. With this, we can add or subtract, okay? So let's say you want some water, all right? I'm gonna keep it on add for now. We can choose the size of our brush, okay? Which is gonna choose this green circle that you see. It's gonna make that bigger or larger as you can see it growing, okay? We're gonna keep it on that default 100. There's also a slider if you, you know, wanna move it kinda of quickly, no big deal. Also, there's going to be this. This is sort of the magic bullet to making your land look realistic, the roughness, okay? It defaults you to eight, which again, means this is the layer level of roughness that you're going to get. Now, if you'd like to experiment with this, I absolutely encourage that behavior. And if you look, it's gonna give you a nice, super shallow, jagged edge. Now we're gonna move it up to 16, which is halfway through uh, the size range. And you can see that it's gonna give you a little bit more of a pattern. And of course, if we move it up to 32, it's gonna give you a little more of a bumpy pattern, okay? Now, this is super important down the road, but you can certainly choose to mix and match. The only other difference is, is if you click the smooth icon off, you can see that these edges become more jagged. Uh, same thing, once we move down, you can sort of see the effect and how it treats each of the various roughness levels. Now, you can certainly choose any roughness level in between, but as you can tell, nice jagged edges as opposed to rounded off edges. Now, I typically go with smoother edges and sometimes I'll switch it up to make individual sections, but that gets you an idea of how the mask tool starts. Now, we've covered the edge tool, so uh, we're gonna clear everything, which are these two hotkeys. You can clear everything if you want a lot of water in your map or just want to get rid of your progress so far, you can hit fill all and it will fill the entire map with what we're going to call a foreground layer, which is your land mass, okay? So, we're going to clear all. The next option is the circle. Now, the circle is going to give you exactly that. Boom, it is a circle. Pretty straightforward. You can subtract. So, let's say you wanted to make, uh, you know, random dimples or shapes inside of your thing. There you go. The grid is going to give you, it's going to colorize individual grid blocks. We're going to put it back on add. It's going to color grid blocks in an isometric grid view shape. Now we're going to stick to the edge, circle, and some of the shapes, okay? Choosing the rectangle is going to allow you to select an area, okay? Now, as you can tell down here, it's going to let you have some options. You can add, so that's going to add landmass to wherever is selected inside this lightly shaded square. We can subtract, so add. And then we can, of course, subtract it. Subtracting is gonna take away whatever's in it. So let's say you wanted a nice sharp edge there, subtract, boom, now you have an edge. It lets you go ahead and choose the different shapes, which we'll talk about momentarily. And this will allow you to give you two choices. It will let you fill the interior of the shape, which is primarily what I work with, what most people work with, or we can fill the outline, which is gonna get you this gray area around. The base size is 32. Bringing that up, as you can tell, allows the shaded area to become bigger. Hit enter, and boom, now you have a shaded area. Okay, next tool we're talking about is up on the le top left here is the ellipse, okay? For those of you playing along at home, you can make circles, donuts, uh, oblong layers, ovals, all of that good stuff. As you move your cursor with some of these shapes, you notice that your cursor becomes four arrows. Well, once it's in the four arrows, you can move that pattern, okay? So if you want, let's say we want a small circle, okay? Like a donut, or maybe we want something like a cart wheel or something. You know, if you're making a themed map, maybe you, maybe you wanna make a wheel. Uh, choosing that, again, we can hit enter. It's gonna stamp that. We can, not that it matters so much with the circle, because I managed to draw a good perfect circle, it looks like. Uh, but you can rotate with this button here and you can also uh, choose the stamp and draw another draw another circle okay you can hit enter and it's going to stamp it you can use the arrow uh, icon here left mouse click drag drag enter drag enter and suddenly we're making audi or the olympics okay so all those things are an option and of course making that thicker is just going to give you a bigger circle and to fill it in, again, you hit the enter key, okay? So we're gonna hit clear all. We're gonna go on to the pretty straightforward here, the polygon. We draw a polygon now up here at the top. That's where it gives you an option. You can choose how many sides it has, okay? So anything from a triangle, if, and sometimes, like if you stamp one of these and hit enter, okay? It's gonna give you some of that landmass. 
but it's also gonna give you sometimes a basis where we can go back through up in the top left and use your other brushes in order to customize that land mass, okay? So we're gonna clear all. So for today, we're gonna to make a basic world land map. Now, we're gonna drag our size up a little bit, so we're making a pretty good size map. We've got it over here on the edge pattern. Uh, I'm gonna choose my roughness up a little bit. Let's go to about halfway, okay, just to give us some uh, some bigger details. I'm just gonna draw a map and at this point in time guys it, it doesn't matter You know, it, it's really up to you if you're starting a new campaign running one you've ran for a long time uh, You can certainly watch one of my other videos I can show you how to take a hand-drawn map and convert it into an incarnate digital version, uh, but for now uh, Let's assume that you're starting off with a new first-time map drawer period Okay, now you can make whatever shape you like, you know, I'm gonna leave it looking like a I don't know, like a jagged Pac-Man or something. And then um, you can up and down this roughness feature to add or subtract. All right. And again, I'm going to go to subtract. I'm going to make it a little smoother. And just draw in some just random shapes inside the land. Now, that's going to give us some, some water features. Uh, I like to add my rivers later down the road once I've figured out where my mountains and things are. Just for a little bit of realism. You know, rivers don't begin inside of a open plains. So, you know. You wouldn't want to, well, yes, you might. You might want to do that. But you can do whatever you like, okay? So make some land masses out here. You know, you can go through and you can edit a little bit. You can sort of notch in that shape, you know, make the make a cove or whatnot. But again, for now, uh, we're just going to make a couple little shapes here and there. Uh, maybe we're going to add some more back down in here because I don't want quite such a big opening. Right? Boop. Right. So, again, once you've drawn your basic land maps, Oops. Once you draw your basic land mass, uh, then you're pretty much good to go for the rest of your steps. And again, this is changeable. At any point in time, you're allowed to change this thing, okay? So the green sections are what we have used the mask tool add for, okay? So those are gonna be your foreground layers, and then the blue sections right here are gonna be your background layers. Now the colors of those are gonna depend on a lot of things. Once we've covered the mask tool, obviously we're gonna color that in. The colors that it comes with are default, but our next step is to use that brush tool, color in these various surfaces to make them fit what our desires are. Of course, that's gonna be on our next video, so stay tuned. Alrighty folks, and that just about covers it. You've made your first land mass. Now, I'm gonna tell you the most important secret to incarnate map creation. We are going to use the save button, okay? Save button is down here. If you've made a lot of changes, it will automatically prompt you to save. You can tell down here that it says not saved and we have made 62 changes, but use the save button, okay? We're gonna call this YouTube sample, okay? This is what we're gonna to use to edit our next videos. Hit okay. It's gonna save it wherever you uh, started off, whether that was in a folder or in your overall maps location. All right, folks, now that you just about cover us, we've made a land mask. We've showed you how to use the various tools inside the mask tool. That means up next is all about the brush tool. How to use shading to make various areas of your map appear distinct and different and to give it a little bit of personal flair that you desire. Well, folks, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch our video. As always, hit like and subscribe if you like what you saw and to get more content. Also, leave a comment below if you have other ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future. Check out our other videos where you can find other incarnate mapping essentials. And as always, have a good day.